Well, hello everyone, this is me, Sam, the Blue Tech Guy right here. We're taking a look at another product. We've already unboxed it, so uh, this is sort of like a post-unboxing because I've taken the liberty to kind of set this demonstration up real quick so that I can get to it and uh, do it as fast as I can. This is take two on this video. The first video was 47 minutes long. I want to see if I can keep it shorter than that. So I went ahead and did some things ahead of time. So anyway, this is the... Uh, I can't pronounce this very well, but I will put a link in the description. I'll let you take a look at it. Maybe you can pronounce that very well right there. And this is a cassette recorder. We're taking a look at it. That's the model number right there. And yeah, so this is the instruction manual. And this is the cassette recorder that we are going to take a look at right here. First, we're going to run through the machine itself. And we're going to run through a couple of demonstrations that I have already prepared. So... I'll put this up at an angle right there so you can see the controls. So these are your transport controls for your tape. And this is your record button from left to right. Play, rewind, fast forward, uh, pause and eject. So, I mean, well, actually, this is a stop and eject right here. So you press once to stop, press again to eject. This is a pause button just to pause the, the tape right there. And if you go down to the bottom here, Every shoebox style tape recorder, whether it's a modern one or an old classic retro one, doesn't matter. They all had retractable handles, so you can carry this with you. There's nothing else down here, just that. And so coming over to the left side over here, we do have some ports right here. We have the AC port because this does come with an AC power uh, wall wart or whatever you want to call it. And it does plug right in here. That's for your AC power there. Right here, we do have what is called, let me take a look at it real quick. Uh, we have an auxiliary in. This allows you to record from external sources, such as a smartphone, a tablet. And I've done that, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to demonstrate that in a little bit. Well, I've already done that. I'm going to show you what it sounds like, actually. And then we have right here what is also known as a ear. So that's basically just your standard earphone, earbuds, you know, wherever you can plug into it. It's a standard plug, standard plug. So you can even take your your Beats or Bose headphones and plug them in here. Now, I don't know if this is stereo output or not, but, you know, we can find out. Um, so I'm sure the instructions will tell you. This is a, this button is REM. I've seen in a lot of videos where people ask what this is. So if you come from my time, if you're as old as I am, this is actually a remote button, a remote port. Many microphones back in the days, and even maybe if you go to a thrift store, you can still find them, or maybe they still make them today. I'm pretty sure they do. If these shoebox recorders are coming back, I'm sure microphones are are coming up back as well for these. Uh, many older microphones had a large plug style thing with two prongs sticking out. One of them went into the mic port for the microphone. The other skinnier one was for a remote switch that was located, that was integrated into the microphone. It was an on-off switch, so if you turned it on, it would record. If you turned it off, it would like pause it. So it was a remote start and stop. That's what this is for. Over here, you have, of course, your volume button. This is your volume right here, volume attenuator right there. And that's what we have here. So on here, we got this side. So on the back, we don't have anything at all. Not much back here. Uh, coming back to the right-hand side, we have what looked like a knockout port. Some more expensive tape recorders uh, today might come with a USB port so that you can plug it into your computer so you can digitize music from cassette to straight to MP3. This looks like it would have had it, but since it's a cheaper tape recorder, it was left out. So that's probably why this little tab is in there. It's, it's a knockout tab. And there's nothing else on this side. And the back we have here, not much. We have some labels, some instructions, and we have your battery compartment right here, which does take c size batteries. Uh, I've got some Duracells in here. These are very old, so they might be weak. I haven't tested them, but they might be a little weak. I'm going to try this out with some newer, brand new, fresh batteries. These are not fresh. They're, but they've been sitting around for a while. And, of course, we have something here. Oh, we have a button here. I'm not sure. Okay. We have a screw tip here. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. 
if that is actually just a screw. Okay, well, it says something here. Let's see what it says there. It's got a serial number. Okay. But anyway, I don't know if that's actually, uh, what do they call those, uh, pods or uh, attenuators. I don't know if that's maybe for adjusting the motor speed or something like that, or if it's just a screw to, you know, to open up the, the tape recorder. I'm not sure, but maybe the, the manual will tell you this. I'm not sure. Uh, for stuff like this, you know, guys, uh, you can go on over to another another guy that demonstrates a lot of this stuff, and that's Techmoan and uh, V West Life. I have watched their videos a lot, and they're pretty good, very good at explaining stuff. So I'm not sure what this is. Uh, also, V West Life, if you're watching this video, um, you can tell me what that is. So anyway, that's on the back right here. And on the front, of course, the transport controls, your tape here. This is where your tape goes in, so you open it up right here. One thing I'm going to tell you right now, folks, is this has soft eject. Many tape recorders, even from back then, never had a soft eject. So when you open it, it opens up softly. Most shoebox recorders, even some modern ones today, typically don't have that. Usually the door springs open like a slingshot. And guys, I'm not kidding you. I had a tape recorder back in the days. This was back in the uh, early 80s, maybe late 70s in my childhood. And it would spring the door open and it would literally shoot the tape out. I mean, shoot the tape out. It would, I would have to, it would go flying off the table. <laughs> yeah. So, but this one has soft eject. So for being a cheap recorder, I'm very amazed that it has that. Up here, you have your record indicator when you're recording. It's kind of like your VU meter, but it's one single light. It flashes brighter and dimmer as, you know, the sound intensifies. Up here, this is your speaker. Uh, I'm going to say not a very good speaker, but it'll do the job. Um, and over here, this is nothing. So it's just one little small speaker right here. I don't know if you all can see that. But you might be able to tell where that speaker's at. I hope you can. Let's see, and the rest up here is nothing. So now let's get into some... Let's see, so where are we on the video? We are at... Uh, seven minutes. So let's see if I can keep it under 47 minutes. So let's go into some demonstrations that I have already prepared. Uh, some music and some recordings with both the built-in microphone, which is right here, right there, and the external microphone that they give you. It looks like a little desktop PC mic, right? Okay, so I will be showing you what's going on visually. So here I have a Maxell UR90 good quality tape and I have a cheap no-name brand tape that comes included with this cassette player that they give you so I did some recording on here and I did some recording on here and we're gonna hear the differences so we're gonna start with the max L tape and we're gonna start off with some non copyrighted music that I recorded from my smartphone using the auxiliary input so we're gonna put this in and play it I do notice that sometimes uh, sometimes while playing or recording, um, it will stop abruptly. Now, it has a mechanism in here that protects the tape so that the machine won't chew up the tape. That's very good. Many older recorders were not very good at doing that. I mean, it would eat up your tape, the tape was ruined, and you had to detangle it and all that stuff. So maybe that's what's going on. I'm not too sure why it's doing that, but sometimes it does stop abruptly. So if it does, we'll just kind of get through it here I also have to make sure because when I put it in sometimes it doesn't feel like it's seated properly so see it doesn't feel like it's seated properly so I have to make sure that it is seated properly and we'll see if it doesn't give us an abrupt stop so we'll play and I've already got some stuff on here and we'll go ahead and get it going here so I've got it let me plug it in like I said I have it unplugged but I'm gonna plug it back in just because, like I say, I don't think these batteries are very good. They're not fresh batteries, so I'm going to plug it back in right there. There's your power. Let me show you the plug real quick before, before we move on. It comes with this. This is a plug right here, a very cheaply made plug. So, yeah. Now, some people also say they want to call this a charger. And I know why, because most of the time when you see something like this, you usually affiliate it with, you know, a charger that to charge up a device this does not charge anything this is not a charger it's just for for power it's just for AC power into the recorder 
if you don't want to run it on batteries. It does not recharge anything. And if you put rechargeable batteries in here thinking you're going to recharge them with this, you're sadly mistaken. But hey, go ahead and try it if you want. And I'll tell you, it's not going to work. Unless if you know how to mod the, unless if you know how to do some modifications to make it recharge. But that's at your own risk. I'm not telling you to do that. So let's get into the demonstration and let's listen. So let's see what we got on this tape. So we're going to give it a rewind just to make sure all the slack is taken up. And let's play. Turn up the volume. We're up at full volume. This is non-copyrighted music from YouTube that was recorded using this very same tape recorder through the auxiliary input. So I would say that, you know, it sounds decent with music. We're going to try a professionally recorded tape in a while. So here we go with some voice demonstrations. Okay, folks, so that was test number one. This is going to be at full volume. Music using the auxiliary input straight into this tape recorder. So, as you can see, it sounds decent, but... We'll turn it down uh, just a bit because I, I can hear a little bit of distortion. So now we're on demonstration number two, recording music while on batteries using the built-in condenser microphone. So, we're going to test ambient noises. I, I, I'm just right over the recorder and I'm speaking. Um, and the blue light is, is flashing, as you can see. So I'm going to go on over to the room over there. I'm going to make some noise, and we're going to test ambience noise around the room just to see what it can pick up, you know, from a distance. So we're going to do this now. Uh, here we go. I'm going to play some music on my phone uh. from a distance, and then I'm going to speak from a distance. Mm. So you can hear there is a lot of noise, a lot of hissing, some background noise, and yeah, so a lot of noise, in the, you know, a lot of background noise, but you can still hear me in the background. So I'm... So you can hear the music from my phone, but there's a Not lot of background back. noise. So that's the next demonstration using the built-in microphone on batteries. Now we're going to go to the uh, external in microphone, and we're going to test, do some recording tests there. We are now beginning test number two on battery power using the external microphone, and I'm speaking kind of loud, I'm going to speak a little softer just to see if it can pick me up still. The light's not flashing very much, but we're going to see how it sounds. I'm standing here at the table. I'm, I'm not too far away from the microphone. You can hear that the, the sound cleared up a little bit, so you now you have a lot less background noise. So anyway, now we're going to go... Obviously, it's not very good for ASMR because you can still hear some static, see how it does with some hissing, ambient background noise. So let's do this. Now, what I'm going to do with this demonstration is I'm going to leave the music playing right here, and I'm going to go make some noise in the background. So here we go. <laughs> So right there, the music is being recorded through the external microphone while I go walk in the background and make some noise. Okay, that, if you heard that, that was me banging on the table. I am talking in the background. I don't know if you all can hear it. So obviously the music is overpowering me in the background. 
Okay, and there we go. See, we just had an abrupt stop. I don't know why it's doing that. So we'll continue playing. So now we've got the music off. Let's do this again. I'm going to walk over to the other room. I'm going to make some noise. Okay, so we're getting some abrupt stops. I don't know why it's doing that. But let's try this again. Yeah, it just stops out of nowhere. So I'm here in the kitchen. I'm speaking. And I'm walking over here. Just want to see how it makes that noise. So I'm banging on the table there. It picks up much better background noise when you don't have something playing right next to the microphone. Uh, it stops abruptly. So I can't figure why that's happening. But it doesn't seem to be doing it now. So now I'm back over here. And eh. so this is while it's plugged in. I'm doing it while it's plugged in. And now we're going to uh, just do a quick test here. Uh, while it's unplugged, so I'm going to pull out the AC power, and I'm going to do this now. So, so I have not pulled out the plug, and now we're recording while on batteries using the external microphone right here. And now we're going to pause and go to the built-in microphone. So now we are on the built-in microphone using batteries. So you you noticed that that. The background noise came back when we went back to the built-in mic. Once again, another abrupt stop. Don't know why it's doing that. So now we are on the built-in microphone using batteries. And you'll notice that uh, when I go to the built-in microphone, there's a little more noise, a little more uh, hissing and stuff like that. Uh, okay, see? We're getting abrupt stops right here. So... More noise hissing and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah. So this concludes this test I'm using a Maxell UR90. So obviously you guys can see that the built-in microphone introduces a lot more noise, a lot more background. Yeah. So and that's on this Maxell UR90 tape right here, which is a much better tape. Uh, so yeah. Uh, of course, I will give it a fair shake. Anytime you have a microphone that is integrated into a tape recorder like this, you're always going to get either motor noise, a lot of hissing, even some electrical noise, which that sounds like that that ringing or that swirling sound, whatever you want to call it. That yeah, um, it's probably electrical interference from the motor itself because it even does it when batteries are off. Some people, some people have complained of getting lots of electrical noise when you have this plugged in. Well, you do, so when you unplug this, it reduces it. You don't get as much background noise, but you still get some motor noise and some electrical interference with a built-in mic. So we are at about, let's see, 18 minutes right here. That was on the Max UR90 tape. So now let's play some music off of this. This is copyrighted, so I'm not gonna play too much. And this is a professionally recorded tape. <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to put this in and we'll play some of this. Hopefully it doesn't do abruptly stop or it gives me enough time just to play. This is a professionally recorded studio tape. So we should get much better sound off of this, hopefully. And let's play. Let's listen to a little snippet of piano music. So music quality wise, I mean, if you're playing a good professionally recorded tape, it does sound pretty good. It's not the best sound quality, but it's, uh, I mean, it's doable. I mean, it'll work. You know, I mean, I don't recommend you listen to this. I mean, you can listen to music on this on a regular basis, but just keep in mind that it's not going to be the best sounding music. <laughs> so uh, we'll go ahead and play this once again. See, I don't know why it's abruptly stopping like that. That's... Um, well, one thing with these tape recorders I'm going to say, they are very good at protecting the tape from being chewed up. So why it stops like that, it means probably because the tension on the tape, it's getting slack, it's getting loose. So it has a sensor on there that when the tape, when there's not enough tension on the tape, it will stop. It will stop the, it will stop the place so it doesn't chew up the tape. So that's probably why it's doing that. So, which means it's probably 
something with the spindles that they're going off, you know, like the spindles are not in sync with each other. Probably some cheap belts or a cheap motor in this thing that I would say, which is probably why it does that a lot. Um, we'll just play a little more and we'll see what it sounds like. Okay, we'll skip to another song here. So, I mean, it, not the best clarity, but it works. It's not the best sound. But if you want to listen to some good music, I mean, you can. Uh, the only thing is you have to deal with this abrupt stopping every now and then. I don't know why it does that. Like I say, but I mean, it's not a malfunction with the tape recorder itself. It's supposed to do that to, pr to protect the tape. But as far as why it's doing it so much, I don't know. Like I say, it could be an issue with maybe some loose belts inside, some cheap belts, or maybe the motor is not all that great. And the, the spindles are not, are not keeping tension on the tape. For some reason, for some reason, this is not keeping tension on the tape as it's pulling you know, from, from one spool to the other. So when there's when there's not tension, it stops to protect the cassette. You know, so it doesn't get tangled up in the capstan or anything like that. So, yeah. So we got about 21 minutes here, folks. So um, I see, I watch videos from uh, V-West Life. He's very good at demonstrating these tapes. He's demonstrated quite a bit of these before. One thing he mentions is... Uh, the tape mechanisms inside the mech the mechanics of the tape uh, some of these better quality recorders have what are called tannishing mechanisms and they're probably the they're more than likely the best mechanisms that can be used on modern cassette players today however some of these cheaper cassette players might not have a tannishin. Uh though the, the mechanism is cheaper which I'm assuming that the tape mechanism in here is not all that great. That's probably why I'm getting all these abrupt stops. The motor's probably not all that great on this. I really don't know how to tell if this is a tannishin or not. Uh, v West Life can can you know tell you guys that. Or probably the only way to know would probably be I'd have to take this thing apart and look at it. And judging by some serial numbers or something like that, that's how you can know if it's a tannishin. Which is the better the better mechanism for modern cassette players, or if it's some cheap no name brand. One thing I can say about this tape recorder is that it does sound pretty good with professionally recorded music. Uh, I have a mixtape here that I would like to play, but it does have copyrighted music, and I don't really want to do that. But yeah, I don't want to get any copyright strikes, but. Um, I wish I could play that for you. So, yeah. So I also have this cheap no-name brand tape. So what we'll probably do is we'll take a good listen to this one and see what I've recorded on this one. And here are the differences between the Max L UR90 and a cheap no-name brand tape. So we're going to play this. Of course, we're probably going to get some more abrupt stops. Uh, yeah, it's just probably just because the mechanism in this thing isn't all that great. Let's listen here. Okay, so now we are doing a quick demonstration of the cheap, no-name no brand tape that was included with this cassette player. So you can hear the difference in quality between the Maxell tape, better quality, and a cheap, no-name brand. This is, use, this is using the external microphone. Now we're going to go back to the built-in mic while it's plugged in. So we are now on the built-in microphone um, using the cheap tape. Once again, Every now and then, it will abruptly stop. I don't know what's going on there. It's chewing up the tape. I hope it's not doing that. So this is while plugged in. So here we are, external mic on batteries. How does it sound? Well, we'll find out once again on the cheap tape. So here we are back to the built-in microphone on batteries on the cheap tape. So how does it sound? Well, we'll find out. Check it out. It's recording my voice. And yeah. And once again, sometimes we'll get abrupt stop. We don't know why it's doing that, but anyway, that completes this test on the cheat tape. Okay, so we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. So okay, so 
yeah, you do notice that um, there is a subtle difference between um, the cheap no-name tape and the Max L UR90, which is right here. Let me get this here. So a lot more hits on this tape than on this one. This is the Max L UR90, much better brand. And this is the cheap no-name brand that comes with this cassette player. It works. It does the trick. So if you're just doing like uh, dictation or notes, it will work. But you're going to get more hiss out of this tape than you do off of this one. You'll still get some hiss off of this, um, but not as much. Uh, a, lot, a lot of the hissing also has to do probably with the quality of the tape recorder itself because it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's one of the cheaper low-end shoebox style recorders that you could buy on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. Um, there probably there are some on there that are more expensive, but they prob they're probably going to give you better quality than this one. So to wrap it up, do I recommend this recorder? Well, um, if you're looking for good quality, like some really good quality, um, something a little more dependable, I would probably recommend that you spend a little more because you get what you pay for. And uh, yeah. Um, this one, it's okay, but uh, like I say, it does have its little issues, as you saw that the the tape was stopping abruptly and all that stuff like that. And it's not the cassette tape. These cassettes, these cassette tapes are brand new. So is this one. But it will work if you're recording, you know, notes or dictation or anything. Just note that if it stops, you'll have to press record again, and you may have to do it several times if it decides it's going to give you trouble. So, yeah, if you're serious about, a little more serious about recording and, you know, with the microphone and stuff like that, I would go with a higher brand. You pay a little more, but it's more worth it on the end. But if you really don't care and this doesn't bother you, then you can save yourself some money and get this one. All right, folks, I'll post a link in the description. Y'all take care. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and it's not as long. The first time I did it, it was 47 minutes. But, yeah. So, yeah, folks. So, y'all take care, and I'll see y'all in the next video. And I might see about getting a higher quality tape recorder um, so I can demonstrate a higher quality one versus this one. Uh, so, I'll see what I can do that. Maybe there are some on Amazon, some for like so a bunch of 60 bucks, 70 bucks. And we'll see what the, the real difference is between a, a, a more expensive one and this one. This is a, the cheaper brand. Uh, this is probably an equivalent to the Jensen's or the Onan brands that you can find at Walmart. Uh, I might even get my hands on one of those and, and, and we'll compare it to this one. So anyway, folks, I will see you all later in my next video. If you like this video, hopefully you stay till the end. Give me a thumbs up. It helps my channel. And yeah, so you all take care. See you all in the next video. So <laughs> you all have a good day or a good evening. <laughs>